our interest in, 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 in Aboriginal Canadians, particularly young Aboriginal Canadians, goes back a few years where I, along with some of my colleagues, uh, spent some time in one of the northern communities in the Northwest Territories. I subsequently have had exposure to uh, uh, other northern uh, communities. And while there are terrific people there, it, is, is, it, it really overwhelmed us with some of the large social problems that exist. To the point where you know, it, it became an exercise to say, what can a business person in Toronto with business activities across this country do? What can we do to change things in a positive way? Because the conditions uh, that exist for many Aboriginal Canadians are just not acceptable. It's not right in a country as rich and, as, and with as much prosperity as Canada that we have people with no hope, no income, and in really terrible economic and social uh, situations. Aboriginal Canadians make up about 4% of the population of Canada, but their youth unemployment rate is twice the Canadian average, which is already unacceptably high. We realize that as an organization, one thing we can do is employ people. Across our companies, there's about 30,000 people that we employ. We're involved with many companies, including banks and accounting firms and law firms and, and many others that employ tens of thousands of people as well. So how can we orient, orient ourselves to be more proactive in tackling that unemployment issue? Our larger activity has been how do we engage ourselves and our companies in our day-to-day -day employment activities and, 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 and employee development activities to be more focused on Aboriginal Canadians. And we've been fortunate to be involved with an organization called Princess Charities Canada. The Prince of Wales in the uh, United Kingdom has almost four decades of charities that have positively moved young people from very tough circumstances into the workforce. And they've done that by getting business and young people connected. 4% of the population is Indigenous in this country. If our companies could employ 4%, in, in management and in entry-level positions, that would be fantastic. I've met companies, Canadian companies, who set a goal of 20%. You know, that, that sounds like a very, uh, you know, a very lofty number, but it, you know, if you put that in context, over 20% of the population of Canadian jails are Aboriginal. Wouldn't it be great to flip that and actually have 20% of our workforce be Aboriginal Canadians? So that's the path we're on. We, uh, we think it's incredibly important and we think it's, it's very achievable. And we think it's achievable for us, but we think it's also very achievable for other Canadian businesses. One of the, th one of the pieces of advice we have that we've found great benefit from is actual ha having employees go through cultural training. Because we all at some level have a view, in fact, probably stereotypes, of what it means to be an Aboriginal Canadian. Uh, having some cultural training really changes that. It gives non-Aboriginal Canadians a chance to understand where, what some of the root causes of the problems are that the communities, these communities face, and what some of the successes have been. And what actually we can think about in terms of engaging with people from, from employment and even you know, an, uh, a community perspective. The second thing I would say is to really be thoughtful about how we hire people. And that's people at all levels. Because we, we tend to fall into, into patterns that often exclude large components of the population, and particularly our patterns could exclude Aboriginal Canadians. Being thoughtful about how we reach out to people, where we find employees, what employment agencies we're working through, Again, there are many, many opportunities. Birch Hill has uh, a, a long association with Queen's and we've, we've had a uh, scholarship for the Queen's Commerce Program for a number of years now. And we, we decided, we, in discussion with, uh, with the team at Queen's, we wanted to reorient that scholarship to Aboriginal students. This community has seen enough disappointments and promises unfulfilled over the years that having this as an, as an endowed scholarship was an important thing to do. It was important to give, it, to, to give this scholarship the permanence that it, uh, it, it deserves. Um, so we're really hopeful that there's going to be uh, increased, a significant increase in, in the number of Aboriginal students that attend Queen's Commerce, that Queen's is able to find and seek out and attract, and that this scholarship will go a long way 
into helping, helping kids uh, uh, attend who otherwise couldn't afford it. And then secondly, I hope it would inspire others to create scholarships for, this pop for the Aboriginal population as well. Queen's Commerce is a great program. It develops great leaders, and the Aboriginal community needs great leaders.